Hi, this is video two of painting techniques for watercolor. And uh, when I ended the um, last or the first section, I had a, a area of glazing that technique that I still needed to finish up. So we're going to start with that one. And for that one, I uh, originally started with a wash of yellow. And now that that's dry, I'm going to take um, blue and I'm going to glaze over it and basically glaze means just putting another layer of color over the first color and you can do as many glazes in a painting as you would like and what that does is uh, where those colors cross over then it's basically going to sort of create a new color so as we know blue and yellow uh, make green and so that's glazing and if I let that dry I could put another glaze over that I can put the same color back on top of, of itself if I would like to deepen that color okay in section two of the techniques this one is still a little damp and that's for the negative painting so I'm going to start with the second one and that's push out pigment and for that one basically you could just have um, some wet paint on your paper lift that pigment back up out of there you can create texture and um, you, that's something that can be used for grass or um, some kind of a texture in your painting okay detail painting is just sort of getting used to what your brushes can do so if you notice I have been doing a lot of painting with this brush and this is a um, golden fleece giant by cheap joes and it's a size 38 and it looks like a pretty big brush but if I use it down on the tip of the brush I can get uh, very um, detailed little thin lines and so it doesn't have to be a big flat area that I use it on I can put it up high and just make little tiny things with it and that can be detail painting or you can switch to a smaller brush and um, you can use this kind of technique for doing tree branches it could be a little texture on your painting sort of the um, different things you might use to finish up an area so um, this section is just something for you to play with your brushes and see what kind of marks you can make with them to um, complete an area so the details and details are things that I generally wait uh, to do on my paintings until the end so I paint generally with my larger brush and uh, do most of the um, painting before I actually get into the final touches with detail Okay, this next section are some ways that you can um, block places on your painting to keep it white until you're ready to paint it or um, keep, you know, and or use it as a white area. So this first one is masking and I don't know if you can see that but it's a liquid and it dries to sort of a um, kind of a rubbery plastic texture and you can paint it on so I'm just going to make some random marks here and once that's dry then I can paint over that so we have to let that one dry and then the other way that you can save white is you can use masking tape or some kind of tape and as long as your tape holds um, has a pretty good um, hold it will keep the paint from seeping underneath but it's something that would be really good to uh, test in advance because you don't want um, to be working on an area and, and have that paint seep underneath it so I'm just going to paint around that area and this is kind of a burnt orange mix that I just made there so we'll let that dry and for the tape you could tear it into pieces and use it on the bigger areas of your painting if you're needing to save that area and then maybe along the edges you could put some masking to seal those edges really well 
All right, so there, in a painting, it's a really good idea to have hard and soft edges. It adds interest to your piece, and that's what this section is. And there's a couple ways that you can have hard and soft edges. One is to um, kind of randomly put water on your paper. When I put my color on, where the water is will be softer edged, and where it wasn't where it was just the dry paper, it will have a harder edge. That's one way. And then another way is you can put your paint on and then sort of as we did with the graded wash up there, you can take water and just soften an edge so that you end up with a harder edge and a softer edge that will sort of follow the uh, flow of that water. So depends on how far out you want your blend to go and how light you want it to get. But So this edge will follow that water and will be soft and this edge will remain hard then. And one thing about painting on watercolor paper is wherever you put uh, water that's where the paint will flow to. So if you're painting around something um, and, it, and you put water on there first. So if I followed this with water around that, in fact I can show you that. So if I stay away from that edge and I just put some water around that and then I come in with some paint next to it, the paint is going to flow up to the edge of where I painted with the water but it won't go beyond that unless I tipped the paper or for some reason put a brush in to cause it to move farther. Okay, Let's see if the negative painting, not so much. The magic eraser area is pretty good. So what I'm going to do for that is I am going to just put some tape on here to act as a stop where I'm using the eraser. And then show you this. The magic eraser is um, basically a kitchen household cleaning item and it's just a certain kind of sponge that this um, company has come up with and you can find them in your grocery store and you just want to dampen it a little bit and it has no chemicals in it so when you go to use it if it's just slightly damp it will lift the paint and you may notice a little bit of um, substance coming off and that could either be just a little bit of your paper or it could be the, the eraser because the eraser tends to uh, lose some of its um, what it's made out of. So basically that's a, a real quick way to get the paper back to white and uh, it depends on if your color is a staining color or not um, how well this will work. And that is one way you can do it and then you can also just work randomly and lift the paint um, without putting tape down. So um, it's something that watercolor artists have picked up lately and um, are using as a, a tool or a technique. Okay, and then I can show you what it looks like under the tape. I'll just lift that off and it makes a, a really nice clean line and you've taken your paper almost back to the white that you had there before. This one is um, kind of a fun texture that you can get um, and it's uh, done with sandpaper and watercolor pencil and there are all different colors of watercolor pencil, watercolor pencil and I'm just going to use a blue one and then a rough or coarse sandpaper and while the paint is still wet, I'm just going to flake the pencil off into that wet paint and it will create a texture. And then once that um, texture or the, the watercolor pencil and that area is dry, then uh, even though it looks like it has a little bit of um, dimension to it, it's, uh, it will pretty much be adhered to the the wet paint and some of it might flake off a little bit but most of it stays right in that area where you put it and it's just another text way to make texture in a painting 
Okay, my masking fluid is almost dry. There's just a little bit of a wet spot right there and where it's kind of shiny. So I have to wait on that just a little bit longer. And I'm going to go up here and do negative painting. And negative painting is a way that you can uh, paint around something that's lighter to make that lighter area uh, stand out. And it's good for um, trees or um, just some texture so I could just paint some random shape or you can see it um, if you paint a letter um, so it's just a way to um, pop out that lighter color and make it make it stand out and that's negative painting okay and then the masking fluid area we will go ahead and take this tape off and you can see how it saved the white of that area and then I'll show you the masking and that will be it for this section so we'll make a pretty purple and we're just going to go over the mask now one thing with masking is that you want to be careful with it um, you don't want it to be in your car in the heat uh, because if it uh, gets too hot for too long it will stick to the paper and it's very hard to remove um, and then if you have it on your paper for probably more than a month if it's in your house and it's not in the sun it's probably fine to be on your paper that long but uh, if it's longer than that it can also stick to your paper there is um, a tool called a masking well a rubber cement lift and I We'll grab that for you. That's what that is. So uh, you can lift the masking fluid with that or you can just use your fingers if it's a small area and just kind of rub it off. So um, because that paint is still wet I will wait on that one and if you'll check back in section three of uh, painting watercolor techniques then uh, I will remove that masking and show you how that's done.